So let's start with the second script. The goal for us uh, from this script onwards is that we want to find some satellite images for your region of interest, find the best images that matching your criteria for the year or the, uh, the and the region you're looking for. And then we're going to create some index used to use it to extract all the water pixels and then download that as a geotiff file. Right? So that's the goal of the model. We are going to work towards that. First, let's see what data set we want to work with. Earth Engine comes with a huge selection of uh, publicly available satellite imagery and weather and climate data that is in the data catalog. Uh, so let's go and find some data from the Earth Engine's data catalog. Uh, to go to the data catalog, you can use this help button here. So if you click the help button, the first link here is the user guide. So if I click on the user guide, this gives you uh, this page, which is the main documentation for the Earth Engine. Uh, we'll refer to this uh, site a lot. This has got all the, the user guides and tutorials that is provided by the Earth Engine team. The last link at the top is the data catalog. Let's click here. This opens up the, the main Earth Engine data catalog, which consists of all the data sets that Earth Engine team maintains and updates constantly. Uh, they are organized at the top by the three main remote sensing data sets, Landsat, MODIS, Sentinel. Uh, so if you want to access any of those, you can just go from here. Uh, they also have categories for other data sets. So if you're looking for climate data, you can go and click here and you'll see all the climate uh, data sets that are available in Earth Engine. So if you're doing some research, you're not sure what data set is the right one, you can go and explore what is available. Each data set has a description which describes the data uh, in detail. So you can kind of see what the data means. You can also uh, search by uh, text. So if you say, I'm looking for a particular data set, is it available? So for example, I want this particular data set I'm looking for, is it available? And you can, you know, find the list listing here and it say this available here and you can access that. Right? So search also works. Uh, this is the main data catalog. A lot of you will be familiar to that. I want to uh, show you one more uh, catalog that is, will be very useful to you. Uh, if you see this community link here at the top, you will see a link to another catalog called G Community Catalog. This consists of a lot of data that is maintained by volunteers outside of Earth Engine. So they have shared some data to the main catalog, but I want to show you how to uh, access the main uh, community catalog. So if I click here, you go to this website, it says g-community-catalog. Uh, this is led by uh, Sam, uh, who's uh, amazing, along with a few other volunteers uh, who maintain this amazing collection of public domain data sets. Uh, there are a lot of high value data sets here that are not in the main catalog. Uh, so if you're looking for some data and you, know, you don't find it in the main catalog, you can come here and search for it. Again, okay, it works the same way. You have the data, it's already in Earth Engine, so you don't have to do anything. You can just find the ID and start accessing it. For example, this is the uh, 30 meter population data set released by uh, Facebook, a really high quality population data set. Uh, you can use this. They also have things like a uh, lot of regional land covers. So if there are uh, things like map biomes layers, which are not available in the main catalog or other kind of different land covers for your region. So you can access all of those. So really a wealth of data sets that are available here. I recommend you can do check those. We'll also add a link to the catalog in the notes so you can see where to find that. Let's go back to the main catalog, main Earth Engine catalog. Right now we want to work with the Sentinel-2 data set. So I'm going to click Sentinel here at the top. These are all the uh, satellite data set produced by the Sentinel program. There is Sentinel-1, SAR. We can work with that in our flood mapping module. Uh, Sentinel-2, which is the high resolution multispectral data. This is what we want to work with. So we'll click here. There are two versions of this data set. So Sentinel-2 is a program with having two satellites in uh, constellation. So they are collecting data and then this processed. And as soon as a new image is uploaded, Earth Engine team fetches it, loads it into this collection. You have a full archive available in Earth Engine. Uh, there is level one data. So in satellite uh, image processing, 
the satellite captures the data, which is known as level zero. So that's a raw data. That's really useful to you. It has to be georeferenced, processed, and the raw uh, values should be converted to reflectance values. That's what is used for science. That's what you can use for doing your analysis. The level one product is georeferenced, so you know where the pixel is, and it is giving you the reflectance of the pixel measured at the satellite. Once the light has passed, reflected from the surface and passed to the atmosphere. So you'll still see atmosphere effects here. So if there was a haze or there is a sun was in a different angle, you'll see the reflectance change here. So level one data is useful, but again, it's not a reflectance of the pixel measured at the car. So you there is a further processing that happens and you get level two data. So that's called surface reflectance. And this is what is the highest quality scientific product that you want to use for your analysis. Uh, so whenever it's available, if you can use level two data, that will be the most accurate representation of the surface. So you should use that. In case of Sentinel-2, you can see the level one data is available from 2015 onwards, but level two is available only from 2017. So you're missing two year of time series data. So in case you need older data, it is okay to work with level one and do some processing. For now, let's just see, I want to visualize this level one data. So I'm gonna to go to this DOA reflectance data, level one C data. This has the description of the data set. Uh, you can read about this. It also links to the main handbook. If you wanna learn how the data was processed, you can read here. There is a section here on bands. This has got many different bands uh, available here. You have red, green, and blue, and I are along with uh, the red edge bands, the Sentinel-2 red edge bands are quite helpful in mapping different kinds of vegetation. Uh, a lot of people find uh, them quite valuable. You also have shortwave infrared bands available, uh, which are useful for urban studies. So if you're looking at detecting uh, built up areas, uh, sewer bands are quite helpful. They all have different resolutions. Uh, the uh, RGB and NIR bands are available at 10 meter resolution. You also have the image properties. Uh, this collection contains millions of images. Every image the satellite has captured, each image has some metadata. So if you look at the properties, these are the different metadata that comes with every image. So each image will have cloudy pixel percentage. What was the cloud color in this whole image? Uh, data and so on. So you get all of this metadata along with every uh, image. So along with this, you also have this at the bottom where you have some code snippet that is available that allows you to take this data and visualize this in our engine. So we can try this out. So I can take the JavaScript version. There's a Python version also available. So you can use either. Let's take the JavaScript version, copy this. There's a co copy code sample available. Come back to Earth Engine and I'm going to paste it here. And just simply copy paste it to the code snippet. And I'm going to run this. And this shows you the Sentinel 2 imagery over Lisbon. Uh, I find that when I'm working with a new data set, which I'm not sure how all the bands are and how to visualize this, this code snippet really helps. You can take this. And this gives you a canonical way of accessing this data. We'll learn what the code means in the whole model, but for now, uh, the thing you need to understand is how to access the data catalog, how to find the Sentinel-2 data, how to find the code snippet, and then use it. And you can say, this is great. Uh, I can see the Sentinel-2 image. You can see it's fairly high resolution data for a publicly available free imagery. Uh, you can see a lot of things. You can see the roads, buildings, um, boats, some large ships, etc., and you get a new image from Sentinel-2 every five days. Everywhere in the world, every five days, you get a new image at that resolution. Like This just blows my mind. When I learned remote sensing 20 years ago, uh, just to get one image for my study region, I had to like, chase after so many people and download the data and all of that. Here, you can just go to anywhere in the world and you can get this data free of cost every five days. So. Uh, you can now use that in very easily in Earth Engine as well. So you can say this is great, but probably you are not interested in Lisbon. 
maybe you live here, you're interested in Lisbon, but I'm interested in my city or my study region, right? So I want to see Sentinel to image of my study region. So let's see how this image looks for my study region. In the code editor, you see there's a search box here. It says search places in data set. I can search for any city here. I'm going to search for Bangalore, India. I'm going to search here. It's going to fly to the city and you will see the Sentinel to image for that city load here. And I can zoom in and see those images. The way the script is set up, it just loads images from wherever you are. So you can see this is great. And maybe you found something interesting. Say, so look at this, this looks interesting. And you want to share this with your friend or a colleague. And you say, get the link and you share this link to your friend. And they say, oh, oh let me run the script. They run it. You go back to Lisbon. Right. The reason you go back to Lisbon is at the end of the script, we have this line here. This is the line that calls the Earth Engine API and says map dot set center to this coordinate at this zoom level. So it says whenever you run the script, wherever you are, you go and zoom to this region. So I will teach you how to change this to so that it goes to your city. Okay? Do not worry about the rest of the script. We'll learn what it means. Right now, let's learn how to make the script go to your city. So I'm going to go back to the city. So I'm going to zoom in and find out the, exactly what I want to show in my map. And maybe I want to show this area. Once I'm happy with this, I'm going to switch to the inspector tab. This is the inspector tab here. And I'm going to click on the map here. It shows me a few things. There is a zippy here. The first one with point, I'm going to expand this and says, wherever you clicked right now, this is this longitude, latitude, and zoom level. So now I'm going to say map.setCenter. There are three values. And the three values are X, Y, and Z. X is the longitude. Y is the latitude. Z is the zoom level. So I'm going to take this and paste it here. And zoom level is 50. Okay. So now, every time I run the script, you'll go to the place where we just uh, saw. Okay. So this is how you first use the search box to find the city or place you're interested in. Zoom in, and then you can use the inspector to find that place you need. The way the everybody understands X, Y, lat long, the Z values are from zero to goes up to 30, where the zero is zoomed out. So if you say zoom level five, the same place it says zoomed out, right? If you increase the zoom level, you slowly zoom in, right? So you zoom in one level to the other. The higher the number, the more zoomed in you are. So if you want to be like a very detailed zoomed in view, this will be a higher level. Like, so you can see this is zoom level 18. It's quite zoomed in to that. And this is what zoom level works. This is how Google Maps use zoom levels. And this is what is used here. Let's do the exercise to see. 